it wouldn't be Wizards of the Coast without another stupid fucking financial decision. Hello, this is Mario Jade, and I'm back with another video, and they are currently drawing the ire from the D&D community for their quote-unquote open license agreement, and part of the statutes in this agreement is forbidding bigoted and discriminatory content on new and old. That's the key word there. Old products. So pretty much... Third-party creators are screwed either way. So, without further ado, let's just dive right into this so we can get a gauge of, yet again, like I said, the incredibly stupid fucking financial decision Wizards of the Coast is making again. And this is why, as a D&D player, I refuse to support current day products or current products from this company. I stop at edition... 3.5. But, again, let's just dive right in. A leaked new open game license for Wizards of the Coast Dungeons & Dragons forbids licensees from publishing any content deemed bigoted or discriminatory. So basically, it's up to Wizards of the Coast discretion on what they deem bigoted or discriminatory. So, God forbid you only have two genders in your content. No, that's bigoted or discriminatory. That, that was the level of stupid within the company right now, but not ju not just the soul level, but a level, but let's just continue. The OGL allowed others to utilize some aspects of Dungeons & Dragons in their own tabletop games, physical or digital. It allows others to use the rules, races, creatures, settings, and more royalty-free. Paizo's Pathfinder is an example of this, though published by Wizards of the Coast. In another case, Solasta, Crown of the Magister, an RPG video game by Tactical Adventures uses the OGL's system reference document to use Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rules. First fucking mistake. But SRD is also utilized in player published homebrew campaigns and rules. 5th edition. Okay. D&D edition started going downhill really at the 4th edition in my opinion. But it really, really snowballed into hell for the 5th edition. And I refuse to touch that edition. The report comes via Gizmodo, citing a leaked draft of the OGL version 1.1 obtained by a non-Wizards of the Coast developer. Dated mid-December, it states that 1.0 version is, quote, no longer an authorized license agreement and all new content must abide by the 1.1 terms. This means all content, new and even old, will need to be reported to Wizards of the Coast and comply. No matter what commercial tier you are in or how much money you believe your product will make, you must register with us any new licensed work you intend to offer for sale, including a description of the licensed work, which of the Coast states. We'll also ask for your contact information, information on where you intend to publish the licensed work, and its price, among other things. Previously, creators didn't need to seek their approval. Gizmodo theorizes small creators will have the most hindrance, especially when multiple platforms and works are concerned. One of the new terms is that Wizards of the Coast can terminate agreements with third parties using the OGL to publish material that is, quote, blatantly racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, bigoted, or otherwise discriminatory. So it's up to their own discretion. I'm talking about Wizards of the Coast. If they deem anything remotely that, even if it's not, they can terminate the agreements. Just like that. Just fucking like that. Yet the creator must also make clear what is their content from Wizards of the Coast licensed content within the created works. Likewise, the mention of perpetual worldwide non-exclusive license from OGL 1.0 is gone, and in its place, Wizards of the Coast, quote, can modify or terminate this agreement for any reason. Any fucking reason whatsoever. And that includes this up here. That includes this up here. Even if it's not even in the content itself, if they deem it so, they can terminate the agreement. Provided we give 30 days notice. Instead, it's World Wizards of the Coast then gain non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, sub-licensable, royalty-free license to use that content for any purpose. So if they even terminate the agreements, they can still use that. So you get jack shit. They can use your content. You get no royalties. They profit. This applies to anything licensees create, commercial or non-commercial. 
The leaked document has also been somewhat legitimized. Later, the OGL 1.1 states those making over 750000 a year must pay Wizards of the Coast 25% of the excess, but only 20% if funded via Kickstarter, Wizards of the Coast's preferred crowdfunding platform. A more custom and mutually beneficial licensing agreement for those who have achieved great success was also mentioned. Kickstarter's director of games, John Ritter, addressed the matter on Twitter. Kickstarter was contacted after Wizards of the Coast decided to make OGL changes, Ritter reveals, so we felt the best move was to advocate for creators, which we did, managed to get lower percentage plus more being discussed. No hidden benefits, no financial kickbacks for Kickstarter. This is their license, not ours, obviously. Again, screwing third-party content creators. Since 2020, some have tried to pin claims of racism against Dungeons & Dragons. This began with op-eds. It was happened even before that, but it really culminated in 2020. With op-eds from hobby journalists... Hobby journalists. Claiming orcs and their inherent evil nature were negative stereotypes of black people. If you were looking at a fucking orc and seeing a black person, you are the racist. Because they have never at all been associated with black people. Not one fucking bit. So again, if you are looking at that race... A different fucking species, not even human, and seeing a black person, you are the fucking racist. Principal rules designer Jeremy Crawford confirmed two months later that recent changes removing orcs' evil alignment and intelligence penalty... I'm sorry, they're evil. I'm sorry, they have evil alignment. Reflect where our hearts are and indicate where we're heading. Uh, was, is, and still are heading right down the fucking toilet. Since then, we've seen sensitivity readers reviewing campaigns, trigger warnings, begging for feedback from fans, fans, who may have been underrepresented historically, removing races for lineages, entirely removing negative traits from orcs and co kobolds, and adding a wheelchair-accessible dungeon. That has really always been up to the discretion of the DM to allow whatever. So, like, they really didn't need to add any of that fucking wheelchair accessible dungeon. And at any rate, why would a dungeon need to be wheelchair accessible? It's a fucking dungeon. 2021 had the removal of problematic lore deemed to be offensive stereotypes, such as role-playing races who engage in slavery, supremacism, blindly following powerful or charismatic leaders, ritual sacrifice, and cannibalism. Who the fuck? fuck would be triggered by, uh, like, actually triggered by cannibalism. I'm not defending that, but seriously. Alright. So fucking what? Ritual sacrifice. So fucking what? Alright? Blindly following powerful charismatic leaders. So fucking what? It happens in history too! Slavery. Supremacism. Every race has every race, skin color on the planet has had a supremacist attitude. All right, but God forbid it's in a fantasy fucking world. Paizo also announced they would remove any depiction of slavery from Pathfinder. Every, again, every skin color, including white people, have been slaves in history. It did not just fucking start in the 1800s with slavery in America and the Civil War and all that shit. It did not just start with that. It did not start with that slave trade. Every fucking skin color, and even still, slavery to an extent, is practiced in the Middle East. But do these fucking assholes, are they going to go protest there? No, they'll turn a blind eye. All right? They'll turn a blind eye to history and facts. This seemed to do little as Wizards of the Coast was still accused of racism. Yeah, you never pandered to that demographic because no matter what you fucking do, it's never enough to these assholes. Still accused of racism when their new one D&D edition launched. Wizards of the Coast would later remove the monkey-like Hadassi race after them also being accused of a black racist stereotype and lore being compatible African slave trade. Again, if you're looking at an orc or a monkey-like race and seeing a black person, you are the racist. Race was fully removed from Dungeons & Dragons on December 1st last year due to being a problematic term that has had prejudiced links between real-world people and the fantasy peoples of D&D worlds. Never. Never. It has never been a problematic term at fucking all until the little SJW, identity politics, cancel culture crowd infiltrated, you know, oozed their way into the D&D community and it's like, we've always been D&D fans, but, but, it's always the but, but... 
and then they change it. Because if you if you were always fans, then why are you making wanting these changes? If you were, like never had any problem, if you had problems with it, you would not be playing this game for this many years as you fucking claim. The draft OGL 1.1 document has other issues for creators as well. Wizard of the Coast note that the OGL was not intended to subsidize or fund major competitors, nor for anything other than printed or printable materials for use while gaming. As such, anything outside of printed media or static electronic file formats will need the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy or separately agreed with Wizards of the Coast. Larger licensed publishers are reportedly scrambling to meet the leaked terms, which have grown from less than 900 words to 10 times that, 9,000. The document also allegedly stated, if you want to publish SRD-based content on or after January 13th, 2023, you have a year, and commercialize it, your only option is to agree to the OGL commercial. The OGL 1.1 draft was reportedly intended to launch on January 4th, with a mere seven business days for all related parties to meet the new terms. Paizo declined to give comments to Gizmodo, but added the new terms were, in Gizmodo's, word, Gizmodo's words, a complicated and ongoing situation. Green Ronin Publishers, Publishing's founder and president, Chris Promus, stated that he had not even seen the updated OGL and felt there couldn't be any benefit to switching to the new one as described. Changes to the OGL have been a topic of hot debate for months. In November 2022, an allegedly claimed Wizards of the Coast wasn't going to continue making a new SRD for one D&D. In a statement to comicbook.com, Wizards of the Coast insisted that they would continue to support the thousands of creators making third-party D&D content with the release of one D&D in 2024. They also stated the OGL would continue to evolve, but they were unable to give specifics with the early development of one D&D. Following comments by Wizards of the Coast CEO and President Cynthia Williams in early December 2022, stating Dungeons and Dragons was really under monetized, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast has been losing money. Fans grew concerned for the franchise's future. Finally, a statement was offered via D&D's Beyond's blog, a digital tool set for 5th edition, 5th edition, in summation, and specifically noting they wished to address rumors and misunderstandings. Wizards of the Coast stated one D&D would be covered by OGL 1.1 and include an SRD delivered in early 2023 and once one D&D had finished development, respectively. Wizards of the Coast noted at the time they wanted the OGL to avoid allowing things like third parties to mint D&D NFTs, NFC, fucking hell. And large businesses to exploit our intellectual property. Also matching with the leaked document, they stated the OGL would only apply to printed media and static electronic files. Further, there would be differing terms for free, share-alike content, and creators who want to sell their products. There were some elements different from the leaked mid-December OGL 1.1, which predates the late December blog posts. For example... Wizards of the Coast also noted OGL-related revenue would need to be reported if it was over 50000 a year, but royalties would only be demanded from those making over 750000 a year from 2024 onwards. They noted that less than 20 creators worldwide would be affected by the latter, and promised creators would find very little go is going to change from what you're already used to. But then again, you also like stated that basically, if you decide to terminate the agreement, no matter the content creator, you fuck them over. So if it's a smaller content creator, they're still getting, like, okay, whatever, whatever you try to spin this, you're going to fuck them over if you deem anything worthy of you canceling or terminating that contract. Bottom line, the OGL is not going away, which is a coast reassured. You will still be able to create new D&D content, publish it anywhere, and game with your friends and followers in all the ways that make this game community so great. The thousands of creators publishing across Kickstarter, DMs Guild, and more are a critical part of the D&D experience, and we will continue to support and encourage them to do that through 1D&D &D and beyond. As aforementioned, OGL 1.0 agreement is now unauthorized. Again, Wizard of the Coast has been losing money. When Gizmodo asked Wizard of the Coast for a statement and about the leaked OGL, they linked them back to the D&D Beyond blog post. The leaked OGL 1.1 document goes out does have Wizards of the Coast admitting if they do upset the consumers and licensees, they know they will receive community pushback and bad PR, and we're more than open to being convinced that we made a wrong decision. So, I find it very, very interesting that they ended with that, even though I don't foresee them making any changes in the near future whatsoever. But you also have this, published on CBR.com, where you have Fans, D&D fans, rallying behind the hashtag OpenDnD and demanding that they revoke OGL 1.1. And what do they say and about that? Down here. 
Nothing about this new license is open, the letter argues. It chokes the vibrant community that has flourished under the original license. No matter the creator, it locks everyone into a new contract that restricts their work, makes it mandatory to report their products and revenues to Wishes of the Coast, and gives Wishes of the Coast the legal right to reproduce and resell creators' content without permission or compensation. Further, the open letter argues that should Wishes of the Coast elect to adopt this new OGL and force content creators to sign, the tabletop industry will shrink to a fraction of its current size, st shuttering the small businesses that populate your local cons and putting a stop to their creations. Another concern stems from how the updated OGL might force small and marginalized businesses to shutter, as Wizards of the Coast's updated version cancels out the original. Alright, I'll post a link to this article down below along with the other one I just covered. But there it is. They're already receiving backlash. CBR is already covering it. But like I said, I don't foresee them making any changes anytime soon. They've they've lost money because the demographic they've pandered to for the last few years at least. All right, now gr granted, like I said, they've been going downhill since the fourth edition, but really snowballing for the fifth edition because the, the loudest shrieks on Twitter from those accusing them of racism and things like that, I would hazard to guess, and I'm it's a safe bet, that the minute fraction of those actually have played the game. They've actually played the game and continue to support Wizards of the Coast. Because it's not about supporting the product that you are taking the cause up for, pretty much. It's all about the clicks, it's all about the thumbs ups, and so forth on Twitter. It's all about the look at me virtue signaling crowd that they are pandering to. And now, now they are going this route. They are going this route. So what are your thoughts down in the comments below? Have you played D&D? Do you still play D&D? Uh, what edition of D&D do you play? If any, like I said, I stop at edition 3.5. I play no further than that. I'm currently part of a group playing Conan D&D, and if you want to talk triggered, the Twitter crowd would be monumentally so looking at what Conan D&D has. But that is what I'm currently playing with my group, and then we'll be going on to an 80s uh, role-playing game called Call of Cthulhu, or like, you know, D&D game, where yeah, it'll be very, very Lovecraftian in nature. So again, don't need trigger warnings there because we're not bitches. But at any rate, let me know all the fun stuff down in the comments below. I'll be live later on Twitch later tonight, most likely playing Destiny 2. So come check that out, Jade underscore Fire. That is my Twitch, um, as my Twitch channel. So if you enjoy watching a gamer who happens to be a female rage at Bungie or any Activision, because I do play Call of Duty and so forth, or any other game, come check that out. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Share on social media if you will. This is Mario Jade. Catch you on the dark side and right down the fucking toilet. That's where they're still heading.